to all of you, all our helpers. I heard that I heard uh, some things today, and I heard you all in prayer, and I heard Brother Terry wish me a happy birthday. Yes, thank He's you, Brother Terry. It. Nobody has ever sang a happy birthday to me like that, so I was touched in the heart. I tell you that something special about the body of Christ. Y'all some special folks. Y'all just special. Praise God. I thank you for all the helping hands. <clears throat> and uh, let me tell you something about birthdays. Uh, <laughs> Just one thing. I claim them all. Just one thing. Birthdays, uh, did you know that birthdays are good for your health? Studies show that the more birthdays you have, the longer you live. So keep on having them, okay? Corny, <laughs> 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 corny. Okay, one more. Do you know, what do you give a hunter for his birthday? Come on, you all you hunters out there. A birthday pheasant, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it that we're the only ones laughing? Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, that's. Uh, it was well, good to know that we don't. Have, let me. Let me. Let me clean that up. It's good that, to know that we don't have to hunt for our birthdays. The Lord is graceful and good enough that He gives them to us year after year. Amen. Thank don't you. have to look for it. Just stick around. It's coming. Okay. Thank if you're here long enough, it'll come. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for everything. We thank you for everything that you're doing for us and all that you will do. Lord, and we pray that we be assembled to hear your word. Lord, not just to hear it, but to absorb it, to take it in, Lord God, to, to go over it, Lord, to let it manifest in us, Lord God, that we uh, continue to strive to walk in your word. Lord, so be with us and all who hear this message, Lord. Let it benefit them and let it be for your glory and their good. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. We're back and we're still in session with our sermon series, God's Got All Power, Where Is Yours? Um, God is teaching us the rudiments, the rudiments of power and the basic essentials of power, the same thing, the things that come along with power. And uh, we've been teaching this message now for about six Sundays or so. Um, so I know by now that those who have assembled themselves or those who have heard this message uh, consistently will have a good working knowledge of what God is trying to get across to us, Lord. Uh, <clears throat> a good knowledge of the term of what, and the, the meaning of, of power and how it applies to, to mankind, in other words, especially uh, when it comes to our life and our eternity. Because basically power is nothing but the ability or the capacity to do something. That's the definition of power. The ability to do something. The capacity to do something. If you have that, you have power. We've been talking about that. And uh, we've been given examples of what it means to have power. We've gone over various illustrations uh, uh, which prove that mankind does have some power because mankind, as the definition says, has the ability or the capacity to do things, don't we? We're able to do certain things. Uh, we, we work and so forth and so on. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Now, the question that's asked in our sermon series is, where is your power? Where is your power? Okay? Where do you suppose your power is? Well... A reasonable answer might be all over the place. Where is your power? All over the place. Because the natural man or the natural woman's reasoning that may, uh, may be that mankind, human beings, do possess power. And this fact is evident and is seen all over the globe. Think about it. Truth be told, the evidence of man's power can be, can be easily seen by the inventions that man uh, uh, invents. Am I right? The inventions, the discoveries uh, uh, through the ages that man has done, uh, through their minds and intellectually. Some of these examples we've already mentioned in the previous uh, segments of the sermon, so I won't go over all those. But I was just thinking uh, the other day something hit me. Anybody familiar with the International Space Station? The International Space Station above the Earth? Brother Dave knows about that, Sister Patricia? Okay, that's in operation right now, and it's been in operation uh, since, uh, I think, the year 2000, somewhere after 1999. Uh, certainly, that's a pretty good example of ingenuity and power, isn't it? Mm -hmm. 
Am I right? Mm -hmm. Mankind. This is associated with mankind. You've got an international crew in outer space. Why are they there? Well, I understand that they're gathering together to live and to work at least 250 miles above Earth's atmosphere. So we can't say that man doesn't have power. He's got some power, okay? Mm -hmm. Again, we, we've been told that their mission is to advance technology and conduct long-term exploration of outer space. Now, and now, that sounds plausible to most people, right? I mean, that, that makes sense because we're talking about mankind doing what mankind does today. He's exploring. He's trying to uh, do things. He's trying to get ready for stuff. He, he's going with an idea that, that I believe this will work. I, I, this is what I think we should do. They're gathering together. Doesn't that sound similar to what we uh, discussed back in Genesis chapter 11? We went over that last week in, in reviewing what transpired in the city of Babel or Babel, whichever way you want to pronounce it. Americans, in the American language, it's uh, pronounced uh, Babel, and the other way it's, it's Babel. But in other words, what seems good to man may very well be. Mm -hmm. But what seems good in our own ideas may very well not be. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Mankind in their own natural state, as advanced as we may be, mankind is not advanced enough to go it alone without God. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Mankind is as powerful and intellectually and academically equipped as he or she may be is anemic when compared to the inspiring uh, omnipotence of God. We've got to know that. Amen? Amen. It doesn't matter who you are or how much acclaim you might attain. It's, it all pales in the face of God's limited, limitless power and accomplishment. God's power is limitless. Man's power is limited. That's what we need to understand. Let's go to the Word of God for a moment. I'm going to ask Ms. Annalisa Jones. It's her birthday. I mean, it's our birthday. It's my birthday. I'm going to ask Pastor Ann Lisa Jones to, to read this text for us. Look, you know what? I was just, I was just staring at Brother Miles. He looks so handsome in his little two-piece suit, doesn't he? I know he? Miles is sharp. Oh. He's, he's a sharp Helen. little tech. Go ahead, Miles. Praise and God. And Helen, too. Helen, too. <laughs> That's too. Praise God. I love our, we love our family. Yes, we do. Isaiah 40, 28 to 31 says this. Uh, and I'm sorry, it was 28. Have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary? Hey, his understanding is, well, hey isn't in there, but his understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak, yes he does, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. You know, I, I, I love this text of Scripture because it... And not only uh, does it proclaim the sovereign power of God, but it gives us comfort. Amen. Amen. If you read this, uh, uh, this, this scripture here, it, it, it talks about the power of God. It gives us, but it also gives us comfort uh, and, uh, that it's okay that if we in ourselves are prone to weakness, uh, that's okay. And, and, and why is that a good thing? Well, I'll tell you why, because the word says that God gives what to the weak? He gives power mm -hmm. to the weak. Amen? God gives power to the weak. It says that to those who have no might, guess what he does? What does he do? He increases your strength. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Amen? Praise God. This is what our God does. This scripture Thank serves you, to take away, then it takes away our worry. It, it should take away your fears. It should not have you anxious and wondering what, what can you do or what, can, what you can't do. Do you see that, family? Uh, let me just read a few of these lines of Scripture myself. I, I'm so thankful that for Pastor Annalisa, but sometimes I have to get into it and I, 
and, and not put her to work all the time. I read it myself, but especially for those who may be in a depressed state. Some of you are going through depression. Some of you feel like you may not be able to hang in there. You can't make it, okay? Uh, some of you are getting in what they call a, a, a funk. You know, you're just kind of depressed. You, you, your spirits are so low. You don't feel like uh, getting up. You don't feel like getting out of bed. You don't feel like, so don't feel like coming to church, okay? Mm -hmm. Listen to what this, this text says. It asks the question, have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth. We can stop right there. Do you hear that, people? It's telling you, God. do you know who's there? Some of you have been so oh, beat God. down, okay? Some of you have been so tore down, so tore up. Speak the up. word says you need to hear who's on the throne. Have you not yes. heard? Huh? Not heard. Your, your ears have to be open to who's available to help you. It says, have you not heard who's on the throne? That's what they're talking about. Jesus is on the throne. God is on the throne. The Lord rules from on high. Have you not heard? Who's got all might and all power? Have you not heard? Have you not known him? Come on now. It said, do you not know him? It's saying that he ain't going nowhere. He's yes. the everlasting God. Eternal. That means he's not even going anywhere. He's not moving. If you knew him and you don't know him, guess who, guess who moved? It wasn't God. It was you. He's not moving. He said he's everlasting. Mm. Okay, this is what's in here, just right there, just in those few lines. That's why I said, let's not skip through the Bible. Let's walk through it. Let's look at it. Let's uh, uh, get it in. Let, let it work for you. Okay, don't gulp it down. Savor it. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, chew it uh, 70 times. Chew on it. Okay, uh, yeah. so, so that you get it digested in your oh, system. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Have you not heard? Have you not known the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth. It says he neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak. And those who have no might, guess what? He's going to build you up. He's going to increase your strength. This is the God we serve. That's what it's talking about. That's important to know. You got to break that baby down. You got to look at that word and get it in you. This is telling you, in other words, that God is not an absentee God. He's not. Huh? He's not an absentee God. He's not an our Heavenly Father is right not an absentee there. Father. Thank you. Father. I know. I know. I know there are a lot of people out there who didn't have a father in the home. I know there are a lot of women. And a lot of women have issues right now because they didn't their dad left when they were weren't even around. I know a lot of people were raised by their mothers, and mothers can, mothers can raise children, but we know that dad is supposed to be in the home. But my heavenly father is not an absentee father. See, we have men that can make babies, but they don't father. They make the baby, then they're gone, okay? Now the children are there to fend for their own, and the mother can only do so much. But God... The Lord of creation, our Heavenly Father, He's no absentee Father. He'll never leave. He'll Thank never disappear. He you. created mankind, but He'll never abandon mankind. It says, Thank Do you have you not known? Have you not heard the everlasting God? He's there forever. He's there forever. That's what I'm saying. That's what this word means. You see, friends, this word assures us that He is the creator. Of the ancient entire days. Thank you, world. Sir. Pastor just said the ancient of days. It's him who lives and was and is. And is to come. He ain't going nowhere. No. <laughs> That's what that means, okay? He's everlasting. He's ever ready. He's ever willing to help you. To strengthen you. To embolden you. Hallelujah. He's there to get you strong. He's there to equip you. He's able Huh. Hallelujah. Your power? Where's your power? Guess what? You don't need no power except the power that is derived from the power supplier himself, who is God. Amen? Yes. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Thank That's you, what Lord. this word is telling you. Thank you, Lord. We got to know that, folks. Thank you, Jesus. You got to know that. The power is in God. Ephesians 6 10 said, Be strong in the Lord yes. and the power of his might. Amen. Yes, amen. That's what we're talking about. You, I don't Lord. care what you're going through. 
I mean, I care, but but there's a solution for what you're going through. God, Having the uh, the will to be in God's good graces, thank you, Lord, so that you can uh, 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 subsist from the power of God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. God's power. This scripture says, "Even the youth shall faint, and the young men shall utterly fall." There's nobody that can be without God's power for long. There's nobody that can get through without God's power yeah, for long. Weary. Okay? Even if you go through this whole life and you're born with a spoon, a silver spoon in your mouth, sooner or later you're going to say, oh, God, help me. Oh, sooner or later you're going to need the power. Oh, oh, Lord, help me. Huh? It may be on your deathbed when you see where you're going. You've been, you ain't never known the Lord. You've been running from him, haven't tried him, don't want to have anything to do with him. Read, do your study, and be like a Berean. Find out what these atheists are finding out on their deathbed. Find out their last words that they, the last words that they uttered was, "Oh, I was wrong. Oh Lord, help me, forgive me." We need the power of God in our lives. We need it. Okay, this scripture says it. It tells us about it if you read it. All of you. Thank you, Lord. I want you to listen. There's so much destruction going on nowadays. Young people, I see what you're going through. Huh? I may be 69 this year, but I'm not so old that I can't remember when I was young. And I remember and I see it through my grandchildren. I see what you're going through right now. I see you're going through peer pressure. I see you're going through media pressure. I see the devil lying to you. I see him bullying you through social media, through, through TikTok and whatnot. I see how the devil is doing people, okay? Yes. Okay? It's enough to sap you of all your will. But not to worry. Have you not known? Have you not heard? There is an everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the world of the earth, who doesn't faint nor is weary. Yes. You gotta get to know he him. Understands. You gotta yes. get to know him, young men. You gotta get to know him, young lady. He won't leave you. Okay? He won't get you in trouble and abandon you. He'll be there to hold your hand and get you through. Amen. You, He's the creator of the ends of the earth. That means he, guess what? He's, he, he, he knows everything from the end to the beginning. He renews strength. He never gets tired. Amen. Thank you. Now watch this. I want you all to quickly just mark that page where we're talking about now. We'll try to come back to Isaiah. But right now I want to add Lisa, Pastor Annalisa to flip to Matthew 11. This is for all the people who say, I'm at my wit's end, I don't know what to do. Okay? Those of you who are dropping out of society, look at this. Have you tried this? Go to Matthew 11, 28 to 30 and read that for us, please. Matthew 11, 28 to 30 says mm -hmm. this. It says, come, Jesus, this is Jesus speaking. He what? says, come to me. Come to me. Come to me. Huh? All you who labor and are heavy laden. And Jesus said, I will give you rest. Huh? Take my yoke upon you yeah. and learn from me. Mm -hmm. For I am gentle and lowly in heart. Mm -hmm. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, Pastor. Young people, you need to, you need to listen to that, young people. You got your whole life ahead of you. Okay? Older people, too. Young folks. Old folks, in between folks, mm -hmm. you, you, especially those who feel trapped and ready to give up to cash it in. Those who keep going back, okay, to their old ways. Some of you have been introduced to the Lord and you're going back to your old ways, okay? Uh, that's because the devil is tugging at you. He's pulling you. You may not even know it, okay? He, uh, uh, there's a war going on in your life, Amen. That's what Galatians talks about in 5.16. It, it, it talks about there's a war between uh, uh, if, you, uh, if you walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Because there's, there's, the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. There's a tug of war going on in your life. Yes. Okay? Yes. Okay? But Jesus says, come to me. Come to All me. All right? Come to me, all you who labor in our heavy lane. That means when you broke down, when you tore down, when it's on your shoulders and your back hurts with, with, with pain, not just physically, but spiritually. There are worldly things going on in your mind. You can't seem to get over the hump. Jesus says, come to me. Get yoked up with me. Hold on to me, and I'm going to help you. 
That's what he's talking about. You. Young people, old people, Jesus says, take my yoke upon you. Take In other words, yoke. hook up with Jesus, latch on to yes. the sun, link up with the Lord. That's what he's talking about doing, Thank you, okay? Thank you. Link up with the Lord because Thank he's you. got all power. Thank you, Jesus. I can't say it enough. He makes things happen in your life. Thank you, Lord. Huh? Thank he gives you the resolve to get through another day. Thank you, Lord. Hmm? He gives you the education that you never knew you could have. Hmm? Thank you, he gives you the wisdom to make the right decision at the right time. Thank you. For the right season. Thank you, Lord. That's what he does. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy late. Sometimes it's just so supernatural that you're not going to even understand it. But if you have faith Thank you, Lord. in the Lord, he will walk you through. Thank you, Lord. That's what we're talking about. That's the power of God. Man can't touch that. Okay? He can't, he, man can't even, natural man can't even understand it. It's foolishness to him. But if you give Jesus a chance and you watch and you walk with him, the power of God will take over your whole life. Thank you, Lord. Amen. In other words, that hook up so with true. him. Link so up true. with him. He's got the power to pull you through all your suffering and disappointment. Listen to me. If you're going through disappointment, you need to make an appointment. If you're going through disappointment, you need to make an appointment. The bigger your disappointment, the quicker you make the appointment with Jesus. Amen. Yeah, that means that you make a decision to get with Jesus. Yes, link up with Jesus. Listen to him. Oh, listen to him. You know, she just said, listen to him. Some of you know Jesus and you still. Some of you have, have said, I'm saved, and you go to church, but you're still not walking with him. Not walking close enough. Relationship. Hmm? You got to be greedy with Jesus. <laughs> You got to want all of them, not just part yes. of them. You got to want all of them. Do you want all of them? Do you want everything that he has for all you? Do you want it. to please all him to the utmost? Yes. I don't know. I don't know. But we'll see. We'll see as time goes on. We'll see when the trials come, when the vicissitudes of life come. He's got the help you need, Thank and you, he Lord. is all you need. That's all Thank I'm trying you, to Lord. say. Thank but unfortunately, in most cases, Mankind is trapped in a vortex of sin. Yes, he is. He's trapped in sin which causes men and women to behave and conduct themselves in manners that seem to suggest that they have everything going and they're just fine. Yes. I told you we treat God as a shelf God, like a, like a salt shaker, a, sh a shaker of salt, that we just need him to season our food, then we want to put him back in the cabinet. No. That's not, Jesus is not a condiment. He's the whole meal. Thank you. You hear me? He's a whole meal. He's not something to season your food. He is the food. Thank you, Jesus. He is the word. The word is living and powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Thank you. Thank in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. All things were made through him and nothing was made that was made was made without him. Thank you, Lord. He is your food. Amen. He is your food. That's what we got to understand. Nothing more important than that. But unfortunately, we don't seem to get, we don't seem to know it sometimes. Okay, we conduct ourselves as, as if everything is going good and everything is fine. So God has to allow something to come into your life so that you know that he's got all power. Then he said, now where is yours? Yeah. Now where is your power? Because he's showing you something about your power that is not adequate enough. Amen. It's, yeah, you, you're, you're good for a season. Okay? Then when you lose that job, are you still good? He'll come back and say, where's your power? Okay? When they raise your mortgage, or they raise your insurance, or whatever they do, he'll say, oh, where's, your power? Well, where's your power now? When that person you depend on checks out, it's time for him to bring them home, he'll say, where's your power? Where's your understanding? Where's your belief? Where's your faith? See? Jesus said, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I'm going to give you strength. I'm going to walk you with yoke. you. I'm going to pull you up because you need me. Thank you for your yoke. You need me. Get yoked up with Jesus. Sometimes we don't see it. But you all know that, they, that uh, when people behave the way they do and conduct themselves contrary to the word of God, and they purposely know it, there's a number to lie from who? The devil. The devil. A lie from the pit of hell. Amen. Yes. And that's why Jesus talks about that. Tell us again, Pastor, what it says in John 8, 44, please. John 8, 44 says this. Mm -hmm. Listen to what Jesus said. Jesus says, you are huh. of your father, the mm -hmm. devil. Mm -hmm. And the desires of your father you want to do. Mm -hmm. He was a murderer 
from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth There's in no him. There's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources for he is a liar and the father of it. Oh, amen, amen. That's deep. That, that's heavy, as Sister Doris used to say. That's heavy. Deep. Mm -hmm. That's deep. That's what she used to say. That's right. She used to say that's deep. And it is. It is. Because Jesus has given us some wisdom right there. Yes, huh? sir. This scripture tells us point blank. Jesus tells us in this scripture, I should say, point blank, who's making the decisions in many people's lives. Did you know that? In many people's lives, this is who's make, making the decision. It's nobody but the devil. Yes. You've, you've allowed him to make decisions for you in your life. Some of you know that with your children. Mm -hmm. Some of you have taught them kids, told them kids, they're just not listening. Okay. All right. Well, it, it's telling you right here. You thought you, yeah, you were that biological daddy, but now they got a spiritual stepdaddy. Okay. All right. It's nobody but the devil, am I right? Mm -hmm. Oh, it may look like a person is carrying out their role and their purpose in life, but often it's just the devil who's yes. pulling the strings in your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's who's pulling the strings. He's got his hand in your back, okay? Remember the title of this sermon. Remember, it says, it, it's enlightening. God is enlightening you to the fact that he has all power. Okay, God then asked the question, where's yours? Again, mm -hmm. here we've come to know that God's got all power. Man has some power, but guess who else has power? That old Satan. devil. Satan's got power. Don't forget him. God says, where's yours? Is it hooked up in God or are you linked up in the devil? Hmm. Who's pulling your strings? Hmm? Mr. Christian, Mrs. Christian, who's pulling your strings? Who's pulling your strings? And Jesus doesn't mince words. Jesus says to all who follow the devil, to all who do his will, his desire, uh, his desire Jesus said, that's your daddy. <laughs> he didn't say it like that. But it says it right here. You are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you, you want to, to do. do. Like father, like, like son. Mm -hmm. Now, who's your daddy? Mm -hmm. All right? Because if you go back and read what is, what is meant in John uh, 8, 44, you'll see that Jesus essentially is saying, when it comes to following Satan, if you desire to do his will, you are, you may as well be of his lineage. Hmm. You may as well uh, be his offspring. All right? You are of your father, the devil. The Lord has a way with words. That brings a, a, a fresh there's nothing new under the sun. That's, a, that's not a new revelation when we hear that slang vernacular and people on the street ask you and they chide you and say, who's your daddy? Well, <laughs> Jesus said that a long time ago. <laughs> right? Uh, nothing new under the sun. He said a long time ago. Okay? It's, it's nothing to be proud of when the answer to that question, who's your father, is Satan. That's wow. a sad thing, you wow. all. Do you get what I'm saying? He's a you liar. never want to be in that He's position. A liar. Amen. I, I said before that only, only uh, 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 other than demon possessed Satan worshippers would anyone want to say that Satan is their father. Am I right? Amen. Anybody around here want to want to be associated with uh, in the family of the devil? I sure don't want to. I've never liked bullies, and I don't like the devil. Okay? Uh, I hate what my father hates. I hate evil. Okay? But the point that Jesus makes is clear as a bell. Amen. And you know what? It rings true, doesn't it? Yes. It's clear as a bell, and it rings true that many people are following this demonic being, and they're allowing him to control their lives. That's why the Lord wants you to know who's got all power. Mm -hmm. That's why he asks you. That's why we keep going over this. That's why we're combing over this scripture. We're combing over this, 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 this uh, 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 sermon. We've got other sermon messages to do, but the Lord is letting us tarry right here for seven Sundays. Mm -hmm. Okay? Election. And there's so much to bring up that I can't <laughs> seem to get it all. 
Yeah. Uh, election time. Huh? I said election time. Election time, Pastor Elisa said. <laughs> who's it's a power? lot going on. Now, whose yeah. power are you believing in? Okay? You say you know the Lord. You say. We say. The Lord's going to reveal some things. He's allowing us to comb through this thing. Yes. Because the devil is controlling people in a lot of different ways. In places. Come on now. Hallelujah. You got to know who's in charge. You got to know what, who, 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 who's power, who's got the power. That's the fruit. My friends, there's a lot of deception going on in the world today. Help us, Lord. A lot of deception going on in the world today. There's a demon at the root of it. He and his fallen angels. Look at what's going on in Vallejo. Look at what's going on across the world. Police not being able to do, seem like they can't do a thing. Governmental authorities wondering what to do as people lay dead in the street. I saw a body the other day in front of a, uh, those, uh, what do they call them when they go around in circles? Donut. Um, they doing donuts in the street, and they were doing that. And some, some, some man, some somebody got shot, and he's laying by the car. They hadn't even removed the body. And the officer's got his flashlight. He looked walking around the body, looking at the looking at the windows for 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 fingerprints. They have no clue on what's going on. Now I'm not knocking the police, Object. but uh, uh, the so crime is so rampant. The, 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 the demonic influence is so strong in some so places strong. that we all need to be accessing the power of God from the top down. All our authorities, all our governmental agencies, all our first responders, all our pastors, all our congregants, uh, you're only as strong as your weakest link, and I keep saying that. I keep saying that. No, sir. God is saying, do you know who has the power? And he's going to uh, let things go to a certain point so we come to cry out for the Lord, wow. to, to hunger and thirst for him, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the, of the ends of the earth. Okay? Yes. He's there. There's a lot of deception, and we're seeing it right now. And uh, my friends, it's going on and people are being taken in by it. They're being taken by this demon and some of them don't even know it. But watch this. Listen to this example that's written in 2 Peter. Pastor, read that for us. We read this before. Let's read it again. 2 Peter 2.19. I, I think that's what I gave. You. Tells us this. While they promised them liberty, mm -hmm. they themselves are slaves of corruption. Mm -hmm. For by whom a person is overcome, by him also he is brought into bondage. All right, that's the part I want. That's the part I'm trying to extricate from this. Okay? Deception is rampant in the world, is it not? Yes, it is. And if this were a commercial advertisement, it would be described sort of like in this fashion. Introducing sin brought to you by the prince of the power of the air and the atmosphere. That's who's at the root of it. The devil is at the root of all of this. Mm -hmm. Okay? Amen? Satan has affected not only those who are outside of the church. Listen to me now. Not only those who are out there who don't know the Lord, but some who claim to know the Lord. Amen. Huh? Yeah, those who are inside of the church. Those who claim to be the church. People, you got to beware of false prophets, false teachers, and false converts. Weed among the tares. You've got to be ready. You, the devil and his demons have many who are bowing to him. Many are willing to compromise and do his will. It's in the church now, you all. We got a bunch of compromising churches. We got watered down gospels. We got uh, changing of translations. We got all kinds of things. The devil's got people in school coming out to be editors, and they're going to have their own Bible-making businesses. What do you, what you think is going to come out in about 20, 30 years from now? Better hope there's still a Bible during that time. Okay? The devil is busy. He's not just sitting still. All right? Mm -hmm. The devil and his demons have many who are bowing to him, and, and there are many willing to do his will. As scripture said, they become slaves to their captor. 
Okay. And that's what we're seeing. Their father, their daddy. Daddy. Satan. See, man has some power, but the devil's power is much greater than man's. Okay? The devil is a supernatural being whom God created. And he's got some power, you all. Okay? Satan is like an evil power broker. That's what he's like. He's like an evil power broker, and he, he seeks to offer you a deal. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to offer you a deal that looks good, but at the end of it, you're locked in. You're locked into that deal of death, eternal damnation. That's why you've got to know who's got the power. You've got to learn, okay? Eternal, do your homework. He wants you locked in eternally. He wants you to turn away from God. He wants you to listen to the lies and even the, the preachers and the teachers that have given up their, 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 their control to the devil. Now they want money and they're preaching prosperity gospel and they're preaching an I am and I can gospel. I've heard people talk so much about what they can do. I heard a pastor talking so much about what you can do and he believed it. He believed it. He believed that you can just name it and claim it. I'm not going to talk about him. I'm not going to talk negative about him because he had a stroke. He had a stroke, but, but he still talk, come back talking about the same thing. If you can name it and claim it, why didn't you claim your healing? You see what I mean? It's not that simple. You've got to walk in the Lord. You've got to give the power. You've got to access his power and let him move through you. Not doing anything for money or some contrived notion or a group of people uh, 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 getting together at conferences making money. That's the wrong way to go. That's the wrong way to go. That Satan is, a, is, is like I, I said, he's, a, he's like a power broker offering you a deal, but that deal brings you to eternal damnation if you're not careful. Do your homework. Learn from the mistakes of these celebrities who have given themselves over to Satan. Read about them. Read behind the scenes of what's happening to your Hollywood heroes. Read about them and see that they're li living terrible lives. Read about Elvis. People talking about they saw Elvis and he, he saw him in the building. You better hope you don't. You better hope you don't see him. You better hope, you, you better hope he went to heaven. Because there are some things that was going on in this man's life. I, and other people. I have nothing against Elvis Presley. But I'm just saying, these celebrities and people in the sports world who are giving in to, to, to different uh, religious, man-made religions and different things. This devil is busy, you all. Yes, he is. He's busy. You got to know this. And it's in the church. A lot of pastors, a lot of pastors just going with whatever they want to go with because it suits their fancy. You better read this word of God. This is spiritual warfare and it's, the battle rages on all sides. Mm -hmm. It rages on all sides. You've got to know who you're with. You've got to know whose camp you're in. Amen. Amen. As the season starts up now in football. My son, my grandson is playing ball this year. Little Mikey. Mikey is about to find out what it's really like. Okay, Mikey, getting ready to play ball. <laughs> and they had their first game the other day. Mikey came back. I asked my son, I said, how'd he do? He said, they said they had a boy bigger than me out there, Dad. <laughs> He said he was a freshman. He was about six foot seven, about 280 pounds, and he was throwing people in the air, <laughs> tossing people. I said, what did Mike say? He said, that ain't fair. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? Sometimes it's like that. Lesson number one, life is not fair. Okay? And you got to know where the power base is. Of course, I told him what to do, told Jamil what to do. My son knows what to do. I've played for years. But on top of that, we use that analogy to flip over to the spiritual side. You've got to know that this life, there's going to be some opposition, that, and there are demons, and there are powers much greater than you. You've got to know 
how to make the play. You got to know how to run the assignment. You got to hold on to the Lord and know where your power base is. Amen. And this is it. Whose side are you going to be on? Which team are you going to play for? God says, I've got all power. Where is yours? Where is yours? All right. Listen to what this word says. It's Jeremiah 29, 11. Pastor, you quote that for us, and then I think we're just going to close out this session today. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. All right. All right. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, God says, I know. I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Some translations uh, mention that I know the plans I have for you. Okay. In other words, God knows what you need. God knows how much power to extend to you. Huh? Amen. You're his vessel. You're his boy. You're his girl. He knows you're the, the vehicle that God is using. He knows whether to give you, if you can get by with a full tank of gas or half a tank. God says, I know the plan I have for you. If you're going across town, if you're going across the country to witness to someone and you think you're on vacation. God says, I know the plans I have for you. Amen. I know the, the power that you need. Okay? Again, looking at this, this, this passage of scripture, the Lord insists that he alone knows the thoughts and the plans that he has for you, which are conducive to your well-being and your life. Amen. The Lord is saying that he alone is able to save us. Anybody else save you? Can your mama save you? Can your daddy save you? Who is the singer? Uh, uh, Lee Williams. And that song he sang that said, I, 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 forgot, I forgot the name of it. In the song he mentions, I, I, I leaned on my daddy and my daddy left me. So I leaned on my mom and she died. You know, and he talks about there was nobody else for him but the Lord. You see, but the Lord. It's all, the Lord was the only one that could save him. Yes. The Lord is the only one that can keep you going. The Lord is the only one that can give you what you need. Amen. And he says, I know the plans that I have for you. He insists that he is the one to help you. He is the one that's uh, 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 conducive to your well-being. The Lord is saying that he alone is able to save you. And he has the power to redeem you. He has the, the power to redeem us, to restore us, to free you from addiction, to free you from a life of fornication, yes. to free you from a, a adultery. The Lord that you keep going back to, the Lord can free you from homosexuality. Yes. The Lord can take away your gender confusion and ambiguity. Yes. The Lord is the one. He says he alone can save you from uh, uh, suicidal ideation. Yes. He is the one that can save you from depression. Yes. The Lord is the only one that can yes. fix yes. your schizophrenic mind. The Lord is the one that can pull you back together. That's what he's saying. All your ups and downs and all the labels they put on you, the bipolarism, yes, yes, he'll send a doctor your way, but number one, you've got to have the faith to know that God has all power. And I'm talking about all power. I wouldn't say this if I didn't believe it. I wouldn't say it if it hadn't been done in my own family's life. In my life. In my wife's life. In other people's lives. I can't mention their name. When they were ready to cash it in, didn't know what was happening. And the Lord said, take all of that away. They won't take another drug. You tell them this and give them these scriptures. And overnight, he changed them. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Get me to talking. Thank you, Lord. That's the God I know. Thank you, Lord. That's the God who has come to my rescue. That's the God that called me out. I have no choice. Thank you, Lord. I'll never, ever cross it. Yeah, speaking from being a witness. It's for a reason, you all. Yeah. These scriptures are not just words. Sooner or later, if you're walking, if you're at Spirit of Truth Church worldwide, buckle up. Because we're going to be called to show what we know. We're yes. going to be called to walk in it. Thank you, Jesus. Not fluff. Living 
witnesses. We can't be like that cat that they throw in the dryer and call Fluffy. Well, you know, there's no fluff in this, okay? <laughs> it's, it's real. Sorry, you cat lovers, I'm sorry. But, but you can... <laughs> Patricia. <laughs> Sister Patricia, right there, look at that, man. I'm sorry, Sister. <laughs> just, just a little joke there. But, but, but there's, there's no fluff in this is what I'm saying, okay? Okay, now, uh, God can, all of this is, is, document, is documented, and it's been proven through the ages. It's been proven through the ages. Uh, the Lord told me once, you don't have to stand up for me. Just speak my word. See, the Lord's already done it. Been there, done that. Thank you, Lord. We're just speaking his word and telling the truth. All right? It's been proven through the ages. Amen? So, Amen. as we close out today, I want you all to see. I want you to visualize this. this. Now, I know I don't have to say this to those of us who are spirit of truth. But somebody else may see this later. Some of you may, may, uh, 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 <clears throat> may, I don't know when this is going to air. But I want you to see God reaching out his hand to you. I want you to visualize God's hand coming down out of the sky, reaching out to you. And you in turn taking hold of God's hand and knowing in your heart that it's true, it's true, it's true, that God has all power. Amen. And when you ask the question, when you ask the question, where is your power? Just know that it's in God's unchanging hand. That's where you'll find it. Amen. 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 And we're going to leave it at that for today. Praise the Lord. Now to those of you who haven't done so already, it's time for you to grab hold of God's unchanging hand. That's what time it is now. now don't worry about the clock. It's time for you to grab hold of God's unchanging hand. And you know how you do that? You do that by accepting Jesus into your life. Huh? God's unchanging hand, part of that is he sent his unchanging son. Okay? To take on the flesh of man. Die for you. So that he could atone for your sins. And what you need to do now is ask him into your heart. You need to repent of your sins. Are you going through some things? Whoever sees this uh, broadcast, there's something you're going through. You're, you're, you've done some things in your life. And if you don't repent and you don't get with Jesus, if you die today, you won't go to heaven. I don't care if it's something as insignificant as a little white lie. A lie is a lie. It's sin. And there's a, a penalty for sin. And the sin is death. But Jesus came to die for our sins. He can, he can absolve you from something as small as a lie and something as great as rape and murder. You can be forgiven for it. He can put you on straight street. But you got to repent and ask him into your heart. Are you willing to do that today? If so, I'd like to pray for you. I see victims. I see lost people not knowing who God is. Trying to find the answer on your own. I couldn't find the answer. I didn't know. I looked for it. The sin was in me. Entrenched in me. Testimony. Couldn't get away from it. And one day Jesus came to me. And he reached out his hand. I'm so thankful. I have no doubt that if you accept Jesus into your heart, you're going to be thankful too, sooner or later. You'll come to see what he did for you. What he did for your children. I can say today with all the surety that whatever happens in this life, I'm good with it because of what he's done for me. I know that there's more to it than this life. I sort of look forward to going where I got to go because I won't have to worry. I won't have to lock doors. I won't have to be prepared to do certain things at certain times. I won't have to pull back and, and not go back to my old ways because I'll be 
totally sanctified in the Lord when he, when he calls me up. I'm hoping you'll feel the same way. Pray this prayer with me right now so that you can cross that bridge as well. And say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I'm sorry for my sins, Lord. I, I repent to you right now because I believe that you are God. You died for me and you were raised from the dead and I'm asking you to come into my life now. Save me, Lord. I need you. Help me. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, you are now a child of God. God has accepted you. I don't care what you've done. I don't care what your thoughts are. I don't care how dirty, how, 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 how low you've been. God's going to clean you up and pick you up. God's going to put you back together, amen? Like he's putting all of us back together. And it's a lifelong process. So don't rush it. Just stay holding on to God's hand, like I said. See it coming down? Hold on to it. See yourself as a child lifting up your arm, holding on to God's hand. Let him walk you through life. Let him walk you away from your addiction. Let him walk you away from indiscretion. Let him walk you away from immorality. Let him walk you away. Sometimes he might have to walk you away from a job. He might have to walk you away from a relationship. But don't stop holding his hand. Let him take the lead. And you let him lead you like the child that you are. And he'll get you where you need to be. Amen. Amen. So now we're going to do a deliverance prayer and then we're going to I'm going to let you all adjourn I'm going to ask the Lord to take some things out of our lives that need to go you all know they need to go out of your life and all of you your, your children's life, your relatives life Lord would you remove these things from our lives today blasphemy and obscenity, profanity coarse talking, critical spirits spirits of jealousy, envy, murmuring gossiping, coveting Selfishness, greed, and gluttony. Take it away from us, Lord. Remove pride, rebellion, stubbornness, prejudice, and racism, hatred, unforgiveness, unrepentance, spiritual blindness in all forms, Lord God. Let us know who you are. Would you remove fear and confusion, contention, resentment, depression, and anxiety, uh, revenge? Would you help uh, take away superstition? And would you bring transgender children, Lord, to accountability in Christ, Lord, before they're mutilated. Help us with uh, procrastination, complacency, apathy, lying, stealing, fraud in all forms, mental abuse, sexual, child, spousal, and elder abuse in all forms. Remove it from us. Remove domestic violence from your people, Lord God. Take those things away. Remove uh, uh, murder and the thought of it, abortion and the thought of it, uh, Self-mutilation and suicide, selfish ambition, addictive spirits, spirits of mental illness, infirmities, physical impairments, discouragement. Lord, remove that notion of trying to mock you when your word says God is not mocked. Remove superficial faith, conceit, fence straddling, compromising Christianity, casual Christianity, Lord God. Uh, remove satanic cults, divination, witchcraft. Voodoo, the use of Ouija boards, seances, psychics, uh, fraternizing with fortune tellers, tarot cards, tea leaves, crystal balls, all rooted in the occult. Astrology, Lord, you said abstain from every form of evil. Remove homosexuality. I call them the big four of immorality, uh, uh, homosexuality, uh, uh, bisexuality, adultery, and fornication. Remove those things from us first, Lord. Take away incest, cross-dressing. Pornography, Lord God, immorality as a whole, gambling, doubt, divisions, hidden agendas, distractions, unbelief, cyberbullying, rejection, animal cruelty, and desecrating the land that the Lord has given us. Lord, let us be wise to uh, 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 <clears throat> deceive uh, familiar spirits, Lord God. A lot of that ancestral spirit stuff going on. The only spirit we want to know is the Holy Spirit. Help us, Lord God, to stay true to you. Now, finally, Lord God, I ask that you bless every one of us who, every person that sees this program, even down the line, Lord God, even uh, after we're gone, Lord, I pray, Lord God, that this will minister to them and they will take it to heart what you have put in this broadcast, Lord. And uh, I, I thank you for sending our people, Lord God, my uh, sister in love, 
Shirley Randall Pruitt, Lord God, who was with you when I was 14 years old and, and uh, after high school, Lord God, she was already in Christ. Lord, and I thank you that she has been a mentor, Lord. I thank you for uh, Yvonne, our cousin in the Zoom room, and Lord, I, everyone else who will see this. And finally, Lord, would you bless our uh, uh, Spirit of Truth Church Worldwide Zoom crew. Would you keep us, Lord? Would you uh, keep us healthy, Lord? Give uh, people the finances they need, the homes they need, uh, Lord, and anything else that's needed, Lord God. Peace of mind. Sometimes that's all we need is a little peace of mind, but you know the thoughts you think toward us, Lord, to give us a future and a hope. So bless us in that regard, Lord. We never forget to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless in the presence of his glory to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Can we all say and mean it? Amen. Amen. God bless you, saints. Love you all. Have a wonderful day of the Lord. Praise God.